We saw in section 4.1 that when we wanted to find the correlation coefficient, we needed to use regression on the calculator or in StatCrunch. And this section is all about what that regression is and some of those other numbers that the calculator or the computer were finding for us. So we're going to use that least square root regression line and talk about it, make, use it to make predictions, and then interpret the slope and the y-intercept. So let's begin with least squares regression line. Now it's also known as the line of best fit, the trend line, the linear model, linear regression line, linear regression model, the regression line, etc. <laughs> it has a lot of names. Basically, for our purposes in our class, it's the line. Right? The line that we're using, the line of best fit, that's the one. All right, so it's a straight line, and it best fits the bivariate data set. We'll talk about what that means to be best in, in another couple pages, but it is the line that best fits that data set. And it has an equation, which if you've been in algebra class, it looks a little bit like what you see in algebra class. So in algebra class, the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. So we use y hat, there's a little reason for that, but it has a little accent over the y. Um, y hat equals ax plus b. So we're never going to find this equation by hand. It's, it's just not worth our time. We will use technology. We will use um, StatCrunch or the TI-84 for sure. Okay. But that said, we need to take a couple pages and kind of remind ourselves of all the things we ever learned in algebra class or forgot. So the slope. Let's begin with slope. When you look in the equation, the slope is the thing that's multiplied by the x. So it's the number in front of that, which is a. So a is the slope. Not ax, a. Right, it's just the coefficient, it's just the number. Now slope is the ratio of rise divided by run. Okay, so it's the ratio of the vertical over the horizontal. It's a measure of the steepness of the line. Right? The bigger the number is, the steeper it is. Right? The more likely you'd like to sled down it, and the less likely you'd like to hike it. Right? So if your slope line is number is large, it'll be very steep. If your slope line, um, excuse me, if your slope number is low, it'll be very shallow. Right? Okay, so slope is a over 1, that's rise over run, which is the change in y over the change in x, and in algebra class they say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's in fact what the little triangles mean. In science class that means difference, so triangle if you want to know for future reference means subtraction. So we can make a little note down here. Triangle means difference, and difference is subtraction in math. Right? That's what the little triangle. So, or change. That's the way your science teachers might say it. So they'll say the change in y over the change in x, the difference in y over the difference in x. Rise over run, which means what you're doing is vertical, right, because y is up and down. So it's vertical over horizontal, right? Vertical change over horizontal change. I guess I put a little triangle there, right? Change in your vertical over change in your horizontal. All right, there's a lot going on there. So how do we interpret that? Well, this is a little script you can follow. So you say, on average, if x increases by 1, and you can include units there. So if x increases by $1, or if x increases by 1 inch, or something like that. And x, you're going to put in what context it is. That's why I'm putting it in quotes there. So you'll say what it actually was in the problem. So if my fertility rate increases by 1, or if my GDP increases by 1, right, then y is expected to increase or decrease by approximately a. Now you don't write both of those words. I've had students do that. That's incorrect. So you'll say increase if the slope is positive, right? If you have a positive slope, then you'll use the word increase. And you'll use decrease if A is negative, right? If your slope is negative. And that's just a little note out there on its own. Right? right? So if your A is positive, if your slope is positive, then you're going to use 
the word increase. If your A is negative, you'll use the word decrease, but you will not write this with the parentheses when you do it yourself. All right, now what about the y-intercept? The y-intercept is a point, right? It's 0 comma b. As a matter of fact, we can kind of see it. It's right here, right? It's that point where the line touches the y-axis, as opposed to the rise over the run, which is actually a ratio of lift, vertical lift, to horizontal run like that. So there's the run, there's the rise. That's what's, right? So ratio, the ratio of rise to run is your slope. So it's a measure of the steepness as you climb. Whereas the y-intercept is the point down here. And since it's a point, it has to have an x and a y coordinate. So you have to have two numbers. You have to have your x and you have to have your y. x is always 0, y is always whatever b was from your equation. All right, so the y-intercept is where the least squares regression line intersects the y-axis. So this is the y-axis right here, and it's where it touches that y-axis. And it's obviously the value when x is 0, right? So they're trying to get you to notice that that's a point. So 0, b. And so you'll say, hey, when x is 0, and again, you'd put in whatever context you have for x, then y, use context for that, is expected to be approximately b. And as always, we include units. These two interpretation pieces are so important. I'm going to highlight them and kind of make sure that I remember that it's 0, b for the y-intercept, and there's how to interpret it. And then very important right here. So I'm going to highlight that. That way we never forget it. And I kind of like this one, slope is a over 1, because that helps you remember the 1 part. But you could also just highlight this over here. The slope is a in the equation. All right, um, a couple other notes. Often in our case in statistics class, the y-intercept will not make sense in the situation. Um, if that occurs, just explain why it does not make sense with context um, to receive credit. It, it will happen frequently, so don't be afraid of that. And then one other little note, those quotes. So in the scripts, I'm using quotes. What that means is that you have to write the x variable out in co with context. And words, right? You don't write the letter x. I mean, unless you have no context, but you're going to use the context and the words. And same thing with this. You're going to write the y variable. Oops, got ahead of myself here. Write the y variable with context and words. All right, now let's put our knowledge of slope and intercept to the test a little bit, and let's answer some questions in this next example. But obviously that last page is very important, so we want to make sure we really understand it. Okay, so I have four graphs drawn here, and we're going to assume all the, dra all the graphs are drawn on the same scale. So in other words, if it's negative 10 to 10, then it's negative 10 to 10 for all of these graphs. So we're going to label the sign of A on each graph. Now A is the slope. So A would be positive or negative or 0, and we'll explain. So remember, A is the slope. OK, so let's look at this first example right here. This would have a positive slope, so A is positive. Over here it's positive, right? If I move to from left to right, as you move from left to right, it's increasing. So this also has A is positive. Graph 3, as I move from left to right, the line is going down. So A is negative. And this one's a little hard to see, but you move from left to right. If you move from left to right, you're going down. So this is A is negative. All right, done with that. Now, b, b is the y-intercept. Well, it's the coordinate of the y-intercept, right? So 0, b is the y-intercept. All 
All right, so looking where this one hits, it hits above the x-axis. So that means that b is positive. This one hits below the x-axis down here. So that means b is negative. This one's above again, so b is positive. And this one's actually at the x-axis. So that means b is 0 for that one. All right. Now, which of these graphs has the steepest slope? Now, the steepest means you would least like to climb it, <laughs> unless you're a mountain climber, um, or it'd be the most dangerous to roll down, right? OK, so looking at the four graphs, which one's the most dangerous? It's number four, right? That is the steepest graph. Since all of them are on the same scale, that's the most scary. So it's number four, right? Um, it has, well, <laughs> it's the most dangerous to roll down. Right? You, you, you really hurt yourself on four. In other words, its vertical change is very large. Right? It has, if you do rise over run, right, like this, it has a huge rise to a little bit of run. Right? So vertical, vertical, there we go, change is huge to small run. So I'm using those triangles in a way that they should not be used. <laughs> so the change in vertical, I guess I should say. Every science teacher is just rolling themselves in their, um, well, in their graves. They're just not happy with me. To small horizontal change, let me put it that way. They would not be happy with me. So vert change in vertical is huge uh, compared to the small change in horizontal. Right? In other words, your rise is huge compared to your run. All right, now which one has the largest y-intercept? Mm. OK, so the y-intercept is where it hits the y-axis, which funnily enough, the largest one's the one I didn't circle. It's right there, because that's the highest up. Right? It's the largest up. So it'd have to be number three, right? Because the um, line hits the y-axis or intersects the y-axis at the highest point. So this question, this example, has us just practicing a little bit with understanding A and B, the rise over the run, right, and the, the y-axis, where it hits the y-axis. What we have not dealt with yet is the interpretation piece, but we'll hit that in another example.